Okay, so now we're going to go on to the second part of our ritual dimension um, in which we're going to talk about the life cycle ritual. So a couple other of important uh, Jewish traditions that are done throughout one's life. Um, so the first few that I have here have to do with birth and adolescence. Um, so the ritual of circumcision is done in Judaism. Uh, and basically every Jewish male, so every baby boy uh, who is born, is supposed to be circumcised, uh, which means, uh, of course, the removal of the foreskin of the penis. Um, this is done uh, eight days after birth, and it's done in accordance with the Torah. Um, so I don't think I had you guys read this section, um, but uh, it there is you know the the Torah text in the world's wisdom, uh, the world's wisdom book. Um, but this is a sign of membership of the covenant. So when Abraham enters into the covenant with God, God asks that every Jewish male, every male who's part of the covenant, be circumcised. Um, and this is really supposed to be something that sets the Jewish people apart or sets Jewish men apart. So there is a visible sign, there is something different on their bodies that shows that they are members of the covenant. Um, so it is a religious and spiritual practice uh, for the Jews. So it's not done, uh, important to know, many people today in Western culture have their, uh, their, their baby boys circumcised. Um, but if you are Jewish, you don't do it in the same way. Um, so it's not done at the hospital. It's not done right after birth. Uh, you wait until the eighth day, so eight days after they're born. Um, and then it's done in, uh, it can be done at the parent's home. Um, it can be done at the synagogue. Um, but it's done by an individual who has been trained in Jewish circumcision. Um, so it's not done necessarily, you know, by someone like a doctor, um, somebody at the hospital. It's done by someone in the community who has been specially trained to do this. Um, and uh, usually it's done while the, the baby is in the, the mother or the, or the parent's arms. Um, and it's an occasion for celebration. Um, so this is usually, uh, it's usually done in the presence of family and friends. Um, and afterwards, it's a big party. Um, because this is really a happy, joyous occasion, right? A, a new baby boy has been born, um, and he is being uh, he is being brought into the covenant, right? He is being brought into this community. Um, so, the circumcision ritual is followed by eating and drinking and family and friends visiting. Um, so it's it's a very happy, joyous occasion uh, for the family and the community. Um, the second set of rituals here I have happen in adolescence. And it's when Jewish boys and girls um, are coming into adulthood. So it's usually done um, maybe about 13, 12, 13, 14 years old, somewhere around there. Um, and this is either the bar mitzvah or the bat mitzvah. Um, so a boy has a bar mitzvah and a girl has a bat mitzvah. Um, it really just refers to, uh, it's either say either a, like a son under the law or a daughter under the law. Um, and what this means is that in the Jewish community, you are not expected to follow Torah law until you become an adult. Um, because children, you know, cannot be expected to know everything about the Torah law. Um, they can't be expected to, you know, to follow all of those different legal requirements. Um, so that's not until they go through their bar or bat mitzvah ceremony. Um, so the, the purpose of it is to uh, sort of bring this individual uh, into the community as a full adult, right? You are now choosing independently to commit yourself to this community, to commit yourself to following the law. So you are now afterwards, right, that, that the law is incumbent upon you just as it is upon all adults because you are now considered an adult in the eyes of the community. Um, what this ceremony entails, um, usually there's a lot of lead up and preparation to this ceremony. Um, so as this, this time approaches for a boy or a girl, um, they'll usually have a bar bat mitzvah class at their synagogue um, in which they will, uh, they will study the Torah, they will study Hebrew, um, and they will prepare to do the Torah reading during that, uh, that Shabbat's weekend service. So the bar bat mitzvah ceremony takes place during a Shabbat service, during a Sabbath service at the synagogue. Um, and when the Torah reading is done for that week, 
So a portion of the Torah is read, um, and then the, the, the community you know, talks about it and studies it and learns about it. Um, so what happens on the day if it's your bar mitzvah or your bat mitzvah is you do the reading on that day. So the boy or girl is the one who does the reading in front of the congregation, in front of the community. So that means you have to prepare to do this um, because the Torah scroll is written in Hebrew. So you have to know enough Hebrew uh, in order to read it properly. Additionally, it's important to know the Torah uh, the Torah reading is not just read, so it's not just spoken, it's actually sung. Um, so there's a certain melody that you sing it to. Um, and I'll post on, uh, on this week's module um, a link to a YouTube video uh, of an individual doing this. You can hear what the melody sounds like. Um, it's, it's very beautiful to hear the Torah being read, uh, being sung in Hebrew in this way. So you have to prepare, you have to know how to do this, especially because you're doing it in front of your community, you're doing it in front of the congregation. Um, so that's really sort of the centerpiece of the Bar Bat Mitzvah, is doing the Torah reading for that day. Um, but there are, there are many other aspects of it. Um, usually boys and girls have some sort of charity component. Um, they might be asked to perform some sort of volunteer service for the community. Um, they might be asked to either write something or say something about, you know, why they chose to do the bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah ceremony, what being Jewish means to them, um, you know, how they plan on living a life within this religious community. Um, so something to really you know, um, bring home the point that they are now an adult in this community and it's important that they are committing to this community. Um, so that happens again right around, you know, puberty um, as boys and girls are coming into adulthood so that they are seen as the community, uh, by the community as an adult. Then uh, the next one I have down here is marriage. Um, so important to know in Judaism, everyone is encouraged to marry and have children. This is a very small religious community, so the survival of the Jewish people depends on Jewish men and women having children and raising them in the Jewish tradition. So it is strongly encouraged uh, that Jewish men and women get married and have children um, to ensure the, the continuity of this tradition. So because of that, there is, uh, there is a lot of cultural pressure for Jews to marry other Jews, right? For Jewish women to marry Jewish men uh, and vice versa. Um, so that the, the idea is that their children will then be raised in the tradition. So there's a fear that if Jewish men or women marry non-Jews, uh, then their children might not be raised in the tradition. And this is really a tradition that, um, you know, there's so much history and, and so many stories to learn and traditions and rituals um, that it's, it's hard to just kind of step into it later in life. Um, so it's really important to be raised in the tradition. So you're learning about the festivals or, or the holidays. You're learning how to read Hebrew. You're learning about the Torah. You're learning about this community and the history of that community. Um, so it is very important uh, for the Jewish community that the next generation um, marries each other, marries other Jewish men and women so that their children will be raised within the tradition. Um, of course it happens uh, that the Jewish men and women choose to marry non-Jews. It happens all the time. Um, then there just might be some some family pressure. Well, you should still you know teach your children about this tradition so that the tradition can continue on. And then the very last thing I have here um, is what happens when someone dies, and it's called the Kaddish, or the, the mourner's prayer, the Kaddish prayer. When someone in the Jewish community dies, there are there is a very important ritual that is done by others in that community. So if someone in your family or, or close friends dies, you are supposed to say Kaddish for them. So the Kaddish is a certain prayer that is said for the dead. Um, and um, Kaddish is said at different time periods, different intervals, um, depending on how close that individual was to you. Um, and this practice goes back to that sort of sacredness uh, or centrality of memory within Judaism. So it's very important to remember the dead, uh, to remember previous generations as well in Judaism. So um, if someone very close to you dies, for example, like your parents or something like that, 
um, you are required to say Kaddish for them uh, every single day for a year. Um, you recite this prayer, you, you say this prayer, um, which is, it's not really for the dead, but it's sort of a, uh, a an affirmation of, you know, sort of uh, worship of God, faith in God, um, and hope for better things in the future is what the Kaddish really focuses on. So you say Kaddish for your loved ones who have died. Um, and after the death, there's different periods of time, depending on how close that individual was to you. Um, but what's very important is that on the anniversary of that person's death each year, you say Kaddish for them again. Um, so it keeps their memory alive in the community. Um, and actually, within synagogue and temple communities, each week during the Sabbath service, they say Kaddish. So they say Kaddish for anyone that it's appropriate to say Kaddish for. So that would be members of the community or relatives of members of the community that have died recently, um, or anyone whose death anniversary happened in that week. Um, so the, the memory of those individuals continues on, not just for you know, a short period of time after they die, but for many, many years, right? Because every year on the anniversary of that person's death, uh, you say Kaddish for them. Um, and I'll also post a link uh, to a video of someone saying the Kaddish prayer so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that those are our two ritual slides. Um, so we had a lot of rituals uh, for Judaism. Um, and we just have one more dimension, which is society. Okay.